<laughs> What's good? Welcome back to another episode of Where the Money At. And you know we like to talk all things money and we locked in on cryptocurrency right now. So today we're going to talk about a little bit of the local Bitcoin price action and what the market cap looks like and what the bear market could look like moving forward in the future. We're going to listen to what a CEO believes about money flowing into Bitcoin and Ether in the future now that we have ETFs in the market. And we're going to talk about the IRS's definition of digital assets and cryptocurrency. Then we're going to wrap it up with security because, you know, we love to talk about how to protect yourself in this asset class, breaking down another scam. So let's get right into it. Let me share my screen. First thing I want y'all to do is hit that subscribe button because we two subscribers away from 50. So let's go ahead and hit that. So let's look at CoinGecko. We have Bitcoin sitting at 34,500. Ethereum sitting at 1821. BNB sitting at $226 and XRP sitting at 59 cents. So XRP has had a great week. Solana has had an amazing week going up 27%, but everything else has had a pretty modest week. You know, we had that large scale pump with that price action. We're looking at Bitcoin on the daily on trading view. So let's look at some possible ranges of, you know, where we could trend. So we've had this large scale pump from 27,000 all the way up to 35,000. And we're sitting at around 34,500. So two things I would like to see is where we could trend from here. Let's say that's the top of the trend. And this is the bottom of the trend. So we'll be somewhere between 33,000 and 35,000 which I think adds up if we do the fib retracement. And I think we're right in the golden range if we do that. Yep, we could pretty much be anywhere between 36 and 28. But as you know, if you're trading, if you're trying to do some things like that, I would say try to focus between 33.2 and 35.2. But uh, let's get rid of these. One thing I like to focus on is what happens after we break this long-term downtrend from the all-time high of here here back in february i mean november 2021 we hit the all-time high at seventy thousand dollars basically and we had this long downtrend and we finally broke it you know you can move it around and kind of place it any way you want to but looking back at the last bull run we had from 2017 what happened after we finally broke the long downtrend well that's when the bull market i mean the bear market actually started you know and a lot of people are saying, you know, we're past the bear market and we're on to a new bull, which we could be. But from what it looks like to me is we've just come down from the all time highs and we're trying to find the status quo. That's what it looks like we did back in 2017. We came down from the all time highs and then, you know, we kind of had an average, but we dipped down and we actually had the actual bear market. What I believe is we're going to have something like this again, except, you know, a little bit elongated till we get to 2026, 2027. But uh, let's just look at the total. Let's look at the total cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin. This is the total two chart. And what's something that's interesting here is I drew a horizontal line here. And what is this horizontal line? So we are at fifty five hundred eighty two billion dollars. The whole cryptocurrency market cap minus Bitcoin. And this line here is where we were at the top of the bull market in 2017, 2018. So we're really only 20% from there. So, you know, what does that information mean? 24, 20, 25%. What does that information mean? Uh, all coins could be at a good price. We could be at a good range because honestly, if I see us staying around here for a little while and bouncing up straight off, that chart would look about correct. That would, that would, that would be some healthy movement. So we could move up from here and, you know, this may be as low as the market cap ever gets again, you know, and the next time we go up, we may stay around, you know, after we have our next bull and we come down again and we're in this area of the next cycle, we may be around one point six trillion dollars. But one thing I want to point out before we're done talking about the price action is. Why I, this may be a little bit uh every piece of information is either bullish or bearish, and I feel like this may be a little uh bearish. But then again, you know, there are no rules that are set in stone from the beginning of 2023. Bitcoin's price is up. Over 100%, which as an investor, you can't ask for much more than that. It's up 107%, you know, give or take year on year. You know, you can't ask for much more than that. You know, I know we're used to crazy price hikes, but as an asset class, you got a 100% return this year. That's amazing. So, you know, could we ask it to do another 100 next year, which 
everybody's assuming or a thousand percent next year. Who knows? I don't believe that's going to happen. But like I said, it's not about what I believe or what you believe. It's about us having a plan, executing and being able to maximize our opportunities. None of this is financial advice, but, you know, that's how we that's how we keep it around here. So let's actually get into the news. Uh, we have a guy here, a CEO from Ether Capital, and he just has some very, very interesting um, talking points. And I kind of just want to get into them and break them down a little bit. So let's raise the volume up and let's get into it. It is all impacting the crypto industry. I think a lot of people in the digital asset industry are ready to move past FTX. And so people want to move past this trial. They want to focus on building. Very true. People want to move past FTX. Uh, I just want to play that first little part just to get his introduction. This is Brian Mossoff, CEO of Ether Capital. Uh, shout out to him and what they do. Oh, Ether Capital is uh, Ethereum staking, which is very convoluted. Um, but, you know, we'll get into it. But he has some good talking points. Let's let's go. And given the macro environment, um, and inflation not necessarily getting as under control as central banks would want, a lot of interest is going to turn back to these assets. The value proposition of Bitcoin hasn't changed. Um, you know, you have something that is untethered to central banking uh, policy. It doesn't change um, the monetary policy based on the political whims or agenda of any jurisdiction. And that's very powerful. And whether it's, it's in or out of fashion year to year, if people can zoom out and look at what's happening globally and on a, a a longer time frame, you know, five years, 10 years, they can see that what Bitcoin and Ethereum in this space offers is something very powerful, something far. So he said, you know, Bitcoin is not tethered to any centralized government, which means it doesn't have their political influences on it, which not necessarily true, but I get what he's trying to say. But, you know, those are some good things about Bitcoin. You know, it's not, you know, to the whims of the political situations going on across the world. Like, you know, global tensions are very, very high right now across the world. So is Bitcoin necessarily tied to that? And will it act as other assets will to it? Maybe, maybe not. Or it could act as how gold does during recessionary environments and is a, a, a asset class that people a flee to, you know what I'm saying? When they feel like things are a little bit treacherous and they're scared and there's uncertainty in the market. So, you know, those are two good points and we'll see in the future how Bitcoin holds up. And there's one more thing he talks about, maybe one more minute of his conversation. Let's, let's, let's just start it from here. What will spark Ether's next bull run? What will start spark Ethereum's next bull run? Also lift up Ethereum. Whether they move exactly in tandem or not, you know, we'll we'll see. Oh, let me let me back it up a little bit just so I can get the whole thing. All of the assets are are tethered together. You know, if one outpaces the other, that's that's a different conversation. But I think that renewed interest in the space or a rise in, in the price of Bitcoin will also lift up Ethereum. Whether they move exactly in tandem or not, you know, we'll we'll see. My prediction would be that they wouldn't move exactly together. I think that new dollars are going to flow specifically into Bitcoin, especially if it's through vehicles like a structured product, like these, these spot ETFs that will hopefully be approved soon in the US. So the new money is probably going to go first to Bitcoin. The other thing about Bitcoin is the narrative is very clean, right? It doesn't have this very nuanced story of a smart contract platform and DeFi and NFTs and metaverse and what you can uh, program and move money around on the platform. Bitcoin is this very simple, hard cap, digital gold, store of value, um, neutral political form of, of money or, or asset commodity, whatever you want to bucket it into. It's very simple. For investors to buy into any of the other digital assets, they have to go a little bit further and try and understand, well, who's going to use that instead or what's the power of that protocol? So Ethereum still has a lot. So that's, that's very, very interesting. Uh, he talks about you know, the next wave of money coming in and where the new money could go. And like he says, we have ETFs now. So he believes that money will possibly and likely flow into Bitcoin first now that we have those vehicles like the ETF. And then it will, you know, leak off into Ethereum. And then, you know, maybe the altcoin market might get some love. And that's one of the things I want to discuss and keep on the forefront of you guys in mind, because it's, it's something that I'm thinking about a lot. Like, you know, when Bitcoin runs, when Bitcoin runs, all these projects run. Will there ever be a day where that changes? Uh, I hope not, because that you know that's where all the fun is. You know, during the bull run, catching some of these projects that are down here, and you know, throwing you know crazy money into some projects that are in the lower ranks and catching crazy pump ups because Bitcoin is pumping. But you know, that's something to think about. 
And, you know, he said uh, he said what he said. So those are very interesting points. I'm going to leave the link so you can check out the whole thing and break it down for yourself because, you know, I like to take points out. So let's get into the IRS's definition of a digital asset. I got to do a little reading for you, but uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to drop the link. It's really not that much. It's this part right here talking about digital assets, then this part right here talking about the taxes. So let's talk about the digital assets real quick and break it down. What's their definition? So digital assets are broadly defined as any digital representation of value, which is recorded on a cryptographically secure distributed ledger or any similar technology as specified by the secretary. So anything that's on a software that has blockchain as a database or, or as a data structure. Uh, digital assets include, but are not limited to, convertible virtual currency and cryptocurrency, stable coins, and NFTs, non-fungible tokens. So they break it up into three categories, convertible virtual currency, stable coins, and NFTs. That is what digital assets include, but of course there's gonna be more. So with these three paragraphs, he breaks. they break down the definition of digital assets, convertible virtual currency and cryptocurrency digital assets are not real currency no also known as fiat because they are not the coin or paper money that the money that the united states or a foreign country in oh my bad my bad i'm screwing it up so digital assets are not real currency because they are not the coin and paper money of the united states or a foreign country and are not digitally issued by a government's central bank that's what a digital asset is a digital asset that has equivalent value in real currency or acts as a substitute for real currency has been referred to as a convertible virtual currency. A cryptocurrency is an example of a convertible virtual currency that can be used as payments for goods or services digitally traded between users and exchanged for or into real currency or digital assets. So a cryptocurrency is a type of CVC, which is a type of digital assets. Now, put your nerd glasses on because we're just trying to get these technical definitions out the way. So in the future, when we hear things like this, we can kind of understand where the IRS stands with all this. Because I'm just going to read this list because you need to be aware if you're interacting with cryptocurrency, transferring between wallets, going in and out of exchanges and trying to make moves in this market, you need to be aware of what situations are taxable. And everybody, including myself, needs to be up on this, getting the updates so we can understand where we need to do our taxes, because we're not here trying to avoid taxes. And I don't, I don't believe that narrative about crypto or anything. I believe it like if you do real estate, stocks, crypto, business, all your paperwork needs to be straight. You need to be very organized. So let's get into it. What is a taxable uh, move in crypto? Taxable income gain or loss may result from transactions, including but are not limited to the sale of digital assets or fiat exchange of digital assets for property goods or services, exchange or trade of one digital asset for another digital asset, so swapping pairs, receipts of a digital asset as payment for goods or services, receipt of a new digital asset as a result of a hard fork, receipt of a new digital asset as a result of mining or staking activities, receipt of a digital asset as a result of an airdrop, and any other distribution of financial interest in digital assets. So if you get interest on your crypto, if you get an airdrop, if you get mining rewards or staking rewards, if you get anything from a hard fork, all those are taxable transactions. And we need to be aware and stay ahead of these things so we can keep all our paperwork straight. Because y'all know the issues dealing with tax. We talk about fraud and scams all the time over here. You can go to jail, forfeit your money, lose your crypto, lose your status. And man, look, it's, it's bad. It's bad. So you don't want to do that. And we're going to stay on top of that over here. So let's get into our last part. And you know we love talking about the scams inside of cryptocurrency and inside of money. So Let's get into it because when we break down these scams, yes, it's entertainment, but the main purpose is so you can take the lessons from what happened to somebody else and avoid them in the future. Because you're going to come across some of these situations if you're inside of cryptocurrency. People are going to try to scam you. People are going to try to trick you out your money. And we're going to talk about different examples every episode. Well, not every episode, but as often as we can so we can figure out how to avoid these for ourselves. So let's get into it. Kansas, uh, Kansans warned of emerging scams that combine artificial intelligence and cryptocurrency. Uh, Topeka, Kansas. Kansans have been warned of an emerging scams that combine investments in AI and cryptocurrency, but still have all the traditional hallmarks of regular fraud. The Office of Kansas Securities Commissioner has warned investors to be aware of a new scam that involves the purchase 
of an artificial intelligence algorithm to trade cryptocurrencies with the promise of abnormally high returns. We talked about this in the very last episode of Dude that came out with that coin and he offered a crypto trading bot. You know, this this may be the same story, but these type of things like, look, there's only so many scams and then there's some new ones that come out. These are the type of things that happen and you need to be on the lookout. If you're inside of crypto and you're trading and you want to be a trader and you want to make money, there's no other, there's no more tempting idea than someone creating a technology that trades for you and makes money for you. But let's let's just let's just hear what 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 the commissioner says. New technology can often bring with it new scams. While the potential exists for AI algorithms to create passive returns on an investment, Kansans should not should do their own research before investing in any AI or crypto currency related offering. Look, I don't think any of those bots, trading bots, algorithm bots work. And now they're going to throw AI into it to try to entice you more. Look, if somebody created their own software that made money for them, that they put money into the market and they traded for them and made, fun, made money for them, they wouldn't sell it. They would just keep using it themselves. And if they did sell it, they would sell it for about 10 million, you know what I'm saying? At least, you know what I'm saying? Depending on who they are dealing with. But there was uh there, there, there there's no point in using trading bots. I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, here, here's here's something that I want to get y'all to notice as well. In some cases, officials indicated that the schemes will also offer a secondary investment in an initial coin offering. These ICOs offer the same token listed in the ICO as the interest payment source to investors or higher returns if the investor purchases both the AI trading bot and the ICO. So this is the exact same story of the other dude. He created a coin, which is probably a BS coin, uh, dropped the ICO, and the coin did absolutely nothing. And all these people bought into it. And they were just hoping that community will raise it up. No, it has to have business principles behind it. So there's going to be a million people coming up with their own coin, having ICOs that you have ex exclusive access to, or they're going to try to entice you some way to buy their coin. And they're also going to try to sell you trading bots and their courses. And, you know, I'm, I'm not you know, saying people shouldn't sell courses or you shouldn't buy courses, but you need to check the resumes of the people offering the coin, offering the trading bots and offering the courses or anything that they're trying to sell you. Check people's resume. Check mine. Hell. Uh, and then they got a couple of ways that you should watch out for people offering abnormally high returns, advertisements on TikTok and YouTube, uh, claims of easy withdrawal process, saying it's a limited time offer and offering AI bots and ICOs. You need to watch out for all these things. And that's why we break down these scams so you can be in the best possible situation to be on your guard, know all the tricks that's coming out there because I'm telling you, look where we at right now. This is a very chill point in the market and it could get worse and it could get more boring as price goes down. But once price starts going up, situations like these are gonna come up all the time left and right and you're going to see them in this area of your website or whatever page you're on under advertisement you're going to see them on this side advertisement it's going to be coins new new uh 1000 apis or aprs you know what i'm saying like you need to watch out for these things and you know what i'm saying we're going to keep pointing them out and we're going to keep running with it over here but once again i appreciate y'all for rocking with me and i'm gonna holler at y'all later